Hello everyone, today I'm going to walk you through a quick and dirty method for calculating cash flow from operations. I just wanted to remind you that this is a very quick and dirty method or a back of the envelope type calculation and a regular cash flow analysis is much more thorough than this. So this will just give you a chance to gauge a quick health of a company in terms of its cash flow from operations. So we have here a company A and we have some metrics about this company. The first one is operating profit and the next three we have are the working capital metrics of this company which are accounts receivable, inventory and accounts payable. We have this data between the years of 2012 and 2016 and we would like to end up calculating cash flow from operations for the years 2013 to 2016. So the first metric we have is the operating profit and uh, as you can see this company has operating profit all over the place you know going up and down throughout these five years. And operating profit is basically gross profit after SGNA selling general and administrative expenses, uh, marketing expenses and R&D expenses. So it's basically the profit that is strictly related to the company's operations. The second metric accounts receivable is how much money is to be collected by this company, how much money is owed by outside parties to this company. The third metric is the inventory which is basically how much raw materials or finished goods that is held in stock by this company. And the last metric is accounts payable which is how much money does this company owe to outside parties. As you can see we have some calculations here and then we'd like to reach the result of cash flow from operations. So let's see how we do these calculations and let me tell you the logic behind them. So what happens is when we calculate cash flow from operations we basically take the operating profit as is and add the changes in certain working capital metrics. This is for the quick and dirty calculation so I would like to remind you again. So in order to calculate the changes in different working capital metrics I'd like to walk you through these lines here. So the first one is the decrease in accounts receivable. Decrease in accounts receivable is a positive to the cash flow. Why? Because it basically means that the, the, as the, the amount that decreases in accounts receivable means that the amount you collected. So for example, let's say you had 1 million of accounts receivable last year and this year you have 500,000 accounts receivable. That means you just collected 500,000. So that means your cash flow from operations must increase by 500,000. So that's why the decrease in accounts receivable is a good thing for you. Hence, we look at this in terms of formula as from an inverse way. So it's more like D6 minus C6 in this case, for example, if you look at the formula. So instead of subtracting 2015 metric from 2016 we subtract 2016 metric from 2015 because this is uh, where we would like to gauge the, uh, the get the number the decrease um, uh, in the amount of accounts receivable so in this case for example the accounts receivable metric didn't go down it just actually went up from 82 million to 96 million so there was an increase of about 14 million which means I collected 14 million less than I should have so that my accounts receivable balance has increased. So that means I'm getting a hit in terms of cash flow and uh, to the tune of minus 14 million 128,718. So the second one is a decrease in inventories and it works the same way because if an inventory is decreasing, it means we're actually selling more, so getting more cash as a result. If the inventory is increasing, that means we're paying money and we're tying it in the stock in the warehouse 
So that means our cash is decreasing. So decreasing inventory is a good thing in terms of cash flow. So in this case, we do the same calculation that we did for AR account table. So we look at minus C7 plus D7, which means, or in other words, we subtract 2016 metric from 2015 metric. So in our case, inventories went down from 35 million to 34 million something. And this resulted in a decrease in inventories of 984,433, which is an upside for the cash flow. And the last calculation we have is the increase in accounts payable. An increase in accounts payable is a good thing for the cash flow because the more money you owe to the outside parties means that the less you paid in terms of cash to these outside parties. So you basically bought some stuff on credit, meaning that you had the cash sitting at your in your bank instead of in the hands of the, uh, the merchant that you traded with. So in this case, our accounts payable increased from 19 million something to 24 million something, which is basically just an increase of about 5 million. Uh, we just, in this case, the calculation is inverse to what we've done for AR and inventory. In this case, we just subtract 2015 metric from 2016 metric which is just a regular calculation uh, and uh, it's C8 minus D8 in this case and you end up achieving a 5,066,087 increase in accounts payable. So when we come to the cash flow from operations calculation we just all add up these metrics basically. So we just take C5 which is operating profit and on top of it we sum up all the calculations that we made earlier and the ending result is 62 and a half million. So which means in 2016, we actually made some huge profit. However, the, the changes in working capital ended up taking some part of that cash, which is about 8.1 million, 8 million roughly. So 8.1 million of the cash, of the total cash generating that from the oper as an operating profit is evaporated by working capital. So the ending result was 62 and a half million of cash flow. If you look at the earlier years, the calculations are just the same. So for example, in 2015, the, the balances, the changes in accounts receivable, inventory and accounts payable were in line with each other, unlike 2016. So in this case, operating profit was lower so it was only 60 million 60.9 million however the cash flow generation from working capital was higher and actually it ended up uh, the working capital ended up creating 9 million of uh, cash flow so we ended up having more cash flow from operations in last year that compared to this year and uh, this this shows you uh, how much actually you're making as opposed to looking at just the profit because cash flow means the money that is actually potentially to be distributed to you as a shareholder so that's why it's more important than profit that's why most companies are focusing on cash flow uh, because it just gives you a better gauge of the performance of the business and cash flow from operations as opposed to looking at uh, free cash flows, looking into all the details of depreciation, interest, taxes, etc. Uh, it's, it's a little bit cumbersome, the calculation is long, lengthy. So this is just a, a quick look into the operations of a company and seeing how much cash flow is generating from its operations. Thank you.